Today's sidebar is about the evolution of Jason Lee. Now, yes, Jason is a personal friend now, but he started off as simply just another industry colleague. I'm submitting that Jason Lee's current position in the culture, and more specifically in the media industry, it's a case study of exactly what happens when you exercise tenacity, audacity, leverage, and ownership. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not going to analyze or opine about the substance of Jason's content. His style is for some and not for others. And listen, that is more than okay. What I want to break down, though, is his methodology and his business model. Now, one of Jason's fundamental business practices is that he maintains ownership rights in all of his projects. See, he secures ownership of his intellectual property and his content and then he partners with big time companies like iHeartRadio, Fox Soul, and now Revolt as distributors for the content. Now this model has a lot of benefits, both creatively and financially. Because he owns his company, Jason can say and do whatever he wants on his platforms without fear or risk of being terminated or demoted. Then there's the financial part. And this is a really good model because it allows him to cash out in perpetuity. See, any time any distribution platform wants to disperse episodes from Jason's content catalog, Jason essentially gets a direct deposit notification. We call that mailbox money. See, the money that you earn in perpetuity without even having to go into studio, that's some long money. But the thing I most respect about Jason's model is that he's gotten into the habit of building his own platforms, literally. See, whether it was a radio show or a podcast and now even a talk show, Jason Lee is unafraid to do the very difficult work of rolling up his sleeves and literally building out the platform. I mean, building a studio. See, this is the definition of professional liberation. Jason just like myself and pretty much everybody I know in our business, well, we're told no far more often than we are told yes. Many years ago, Jason and I were chopping it up and swapping stories about a certain white executive who told us both independently that we weren't ready to host our own daily talk shows or news shows. Mm, okay. Now, instead of accepting that rejection and submitting to someone else's arbitrary assessment of his skill set or talents, Jason did what I wish so many more of us would do. He said, well, I don't really give a damn what you think, because my God said that I am ready. In fact, I'm overqualified. And Jason Lee literally built a studio space. He hired his own team of producers and writers, and he bought on professionals for graphics and music. Just like that, he is now hosting his own cable talk show available on Revolt. Now, don't understand progress to necessarily mean something different or the same as outcome or process, and none of it is done with ease. I know this from firsthand experience. Nothing about Jason's process was easy. But let me tell you what it is. It is done, and it is now complete. And know that he's just getting started. See, when you are willing to do the work of building and owning for yourself, you open up leverage and opportunity unlike anything you could imagine. So regardless of what you think of Jason Lee's content or style, or even how he started his public profile on Love & Hip Hop, if you don't currently acknowledge and respect this man's hustle, you are a hater, period. So Jason, I applaud you and I celebrate you and your new talk show, Revolt Presents The Jason Lee Show, and I specifically celebrate your example of ownership because in doing so, you remind us of the correlation between ownership and liberation. As I say in my upcoming book, Bet on Black, the good news about being black in America today, it's hard to be free when you don't own anything. Jason, I celebrate your audacity, your audacity to reject notions of subordination and go create for yourself what others have denied you. And lastly, I celebrate your spirit your spirit of collective advancement. Now, back when I didn't know Jason and Jason didn't know me from a can of paint, this man would elevate my content, amplify my voice, and literally, y'all, he put money in my pocket through brand integrations when I didn't really think that I was viable for that with my branding. I have clearly since learned better, but I'll never forget that. Jason, from me personally and all of us here at The Griot, congratulations, and we can't wait to see what you do next.